Welcome back to the pod, Ryan. Are you feeling better? You Jeez, you were conveniently sick and missed some work during the Masters. And and a lot of people would give you shit for that. But me, myself, I commend you, sir. <laughs> I mean, perfect fucking timing for the flu. And when we when you say flu, we're talking all three letters. I mean, even if you weren't really sick, Ryan, if, it's, if you weren't okay, really okay, sick okay. and you were faking, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I still give you props. Here's the thing. Um, I've had this thought in my head since I was probably in my teen years. I think it I think it dates back to like my uh, one of my high, one of my high school coaches. Like, I don't feel like he ever believed somebody when they said that they, they were sick or that they were injured or something so people would like play through sickness and play mm-hmm. through it so it like really fuck it really fucked with my mental <laughs> so I, now when i tell somebody that i'm sick and i, I actually am which i was this last week uh-huh. I, I feel like they don't believe me so <laughs> in my head i'm like all right well next time i'm face down in the toilet I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna take a video of this in case someone doesn't believe me i'll show them so like I, I didn't do any of that. I didn't I didn't take any videos, no. but it did cross my mind. Like if I need proof, I at least I have proof, which is it's such a sad. It's such a sad. It is a little that fucked I, up that I have to like think I have to prove that I'm sick. But I'll tell you what, like I haven't been this sick. I don't think ever. Which part made you sick? Was it <laughs> was it Kepka winning almost the whole time? <laughs> Or was it the, the rain delays and all yeah. that? Was it the people almost getting squashed by a tree? We'll get to that part. That's <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but uh, last- I'm glad you're okay though, and I feel the same way. I used to like if I was sick, I'd go to practice mm-hmm. until the coach was like, "Dude, go home." And then there's, yeah. then there's no guilt. It's guilt free if they send you home. Yep. That's like yeah, it's like last Thursday. Um, I was not feeling good last Thursday, and that was like the start of it. <sighs> he and looks so pale. Weird. It started on Thursday, <laughs> the first day of the Masters. No, but it, here's the thing: it started. God, when did it start? Maybe it's. I feel like I wanted to pin it, pin it on an undercooked burger that I had on Wednesday afternoon because my stomach started to feel a little bit weird. And then Thursday, I woke up. I felt kind of the same. I felt like no food was digesting at all. Mm. And whenever I like, I like have to burp, I would just like. I puke Gag in my a little. Mouth. Yeah, I puke in my I puke in my mouth, <laughs> and then Thursday afternoon, I'm like, oh, fuck, I am down bad, but I'm gonna go to work because you know I'm not I'm not that sick. I can still walk, so I'll, I'll go into work, and then by Thursday at about two p.m., we didn't have any like inventory here to print. We were still waiting on. Oh, because we were in a snowstorm. Yeah, we were in a snowstorm. Yeah. So I went into my office. I laid on the ground in my office, dude. <laughs> all, I walked into Ryan's office, you know, expecting to chit chat some masters with him. You know, what do you think of Brooks? Whatever. No, I look through the window on his office door, and behind his desk, I just see two feet poking up from the ground. <laughs> you didn't run in and check and make sure he was okay. <laughs> no, I figured he was fine. If I just I, saw just two feet sticking out, I'm like, oh fuck! Now I gotta do CPR to Ryan. It's gonna be <laughs> awkward on the podcast because he's gonna fall in love with me. No, dude, yeah. I saw it. I was like, ah, oh, Brooks is in the lead. I get it. So that happened Thursday, and it it took a lot in me. And well, and I feel like okay, if I know I'm gonna be up Friday, I was throwing up all night Thursday. Um, I know if I send a message enough early on early enough on Friday, yeah, do like three a.m. Yeah, you do three four a.m. Mm-hmm. Then then you're golden, right? So I think I did like six a.m. Uh, I should have done a couple, which hours is three a.m. and you bet your time. Correct. Yes. Um. So I'm like I'm like fellas, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to make it in today. I'm down like extremely bad. <laughs> I was up throwing up all night Thursday, and then Friday. Um, Friday I felt not good still the pukes kind of held off and then saturday you might want to pot like just skip through this part real quick if you don't like graphic content but i was on the pot no less than 25 times Jesus! how did you have anything left at that point i i I don't know i don't know how the human body was working at that point um no i was on the pot not over Classic so, Ryan Clubhouse situation. Yeah, so yes, sir. It was fuck everything under the sun you can imagine. And I was I was horizontal from Thursday night until Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and and weird, weirdly enough, it was the biggest tournament of the year. And I mean, if you're gonna get sick, yeah, oh, why not make it? He's getting f- out of work, he's getting mm-hmm. out of Easter dinner, yeah. just so yeah. he can lay at home and watch the masters. Move the TV into the bathroom. What, he was chilling. What yeah. did you take to get yourself sick so you could stay home during all this? Uh, I, I think I just I mentally got myself sick. It's more like a placebo effect. <laughs> mm. If you just think that you're sick enough, you might get sick enough. Fair enough. Um, 
but it, it, it was, it was, oh God, you guys, it was bad. Um, but luckily I had some good TV to watch because on daytime TV, there's fucking nothing, but you have Netflix. Yeah. yeah, but I, you know me, I, I can't like, I'm, you can't I like to, to be, a show. yeah, I like to be on my phone. I like mindless stuff. I like mindless TV. I like the wheel of fortune. Now I'm getting to that age where oh, yeah. I'll just, family feud, dude. Yeah. I'll throw the wheel on and just let it play in the background. Maybe guess it before they do real quick. Or, I'll, just so uh, I have a spot to put the intro music. Well, I'll go back to episode, uh, one thirty or one, what one Josh say? Maurice Hamilton? Jones drew. They fight that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs> yeah. One Jay Hamilton. Yeah, one. How's Josh he Hamilton. doing these days? I uh, found God. Good. He found God. Did he? Yeah, he did. I remember Where I got was a he? baseball signed by him, and he wrote a Bible verse on it. Which he was, one? He was damn near in a casket because yeah. he was he was a drug addict. Josh Hamilton. Which no, what verse? Oh, I couldn't tell you. It's like Luke mm. something. Psalm 13. Joshua 14, 9. Yeah, probably John yeah. 3, 16. That's the classic maybe. sports one. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a Psalms classic sports one, too. Uh, uh, kid I played high no, school. Joshua 1, 9. Kid I played yeah. high school basketball with had it on his calf. Nice. It, not, not the same one with the cross. It was a different one. Oh. <laughs> so I, there was all kinds of crosses and Bible verses thrown on people's calves in high school basketball. We, we, we were did. talking like people would get cross tattoos and never go to church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. Oh, we we should get golf tattoos. I was gonna say that's like people getting like uh, I don't know um, the Tiger Woods logo on their calf and never <laughs> yeah. never golfing a day in their life. <laughs> I mean, he's like he's God in the golf world. Yeah. Um. Not so anymore. that was. I mean, ar- he he arguably still is Tyler. He's, I, mm-hmm. He got lucky making the cut and then he withdrew. It was sad. I'm not like dogging on the guy. He's old and he has one fucking leg and a few spine. It's just, it's tough to watch. It is very it's, tough. It makes mm-hmm. it makes me sad remembering 2005 Tiger because I'm old enough to remember that now. I know, and as I'm scrolling, I mean, I was on, I was, I was all over social media while I was laying on the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I can damn near tell you about every Tiger clip that's on the internet at this yeah. point, because 96, uh, 97, 05, uh, 14 19 i mean well, all these masters highlights of tiger and and then here i am sitting him sitting here watching him barely even be able to walk up the fairway yeah mm-hmm. i mean there's one hole at augusta i believe they said it's like a hundred feet down mm-hmm. and that's and like, that's bad on the joints really bad on the joints um what really surprised me is he uh, how he hasn't uh like figured out some sort of like walking stick with one of his clubs, like maybe take the putter, maybe take the Scotty out of the bag and use it as a cane. I mean, that sucker's sturdy. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad idea. So he's had that Scotty since 1995. I know. I, and it could be like, like the tiger cane. It could up the value in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. The person who gets their hand on that Scotty Cameron, cause it, it will sell eventually. Um, that's going to Charlie. No, it's going Char- on the wall. No, Charlie's gonna. Charlie's gonna. He he'll he'll start his own Scotty. Yeah, Cam- but I like, think Charlie will get the Scotty Cameron and he'll put it up him. on his wall. Yeah. Like he won't play with it. He's framing that thing and putting it in his like cave with all his trophies and everything. But like Tiger sold. He like he's. I feel like he's donated or given a, or auctioned off shit in the past. That's got to be different to him though. It's the same putter he's had for all these masters, all these majors, all these wins. No, I get I get that. I get that. That's like one mm-hmm. thing. I I if I was Tiger's level, I could not sell that. He doesn't need the money from that no. putter. Stand. No. No. I'm also thinking when he makes cuts and like when he finishes a tournament, he's making money. Yeah. I mean whether it's like 50 grand, 100 grand, it, do, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't even see that hit his bank account. No. It's <laughs> that that It barely <laughs> changes it. Yeah. No, like that's like my bank account going from five dollars to five dollars and one cent. <laughs> right. Well, it's, there's it's, no difference besides, no. hey, now, like, I can get five dollars cash back and mm-hmm. still have a penny in there instead of getting five dollars cash back and nothing left. I would genuinely compare it to like us getting a hundred bucks. Like if, mm. if, if it, Kim getting fifty grand, no, it was like twenty. It'd be Dude, like, that's like us getting a, a rack. That's like us getting a thousand. No, I was comparative <laughs> to my bank account to Tiger's. Him getting fifty grand is like me getting a hundred bucks. Like, oh, I kind of notice it, but not really. And he's okay, getting okay, fifty get grand, saying. and yeah, he yeah, kind of yeah. notices it, yeah. but not really. Um, yeah, it, it was it was tough to watch. Um, 
but it was a good Masters overall. It I was. Mean, because um, this is like the, f I think this, did the Live guys play last year? Yeah. Wasn't it before they left? Or No. I, it, I think it was before they left. Yeah, because uh, Cam Smith got second, and then the next day was like, I'm out. Yep. Yes. Actually, he got third. He dropped to third, but whatever. Yeah, so there was already guys defecting at this point. Yep. Mm -hmm. DJ um, Phil at, just didn't go. He, okay, he yep. was he was asked not to play, but gotcha. he could have yep. if he wanted, but he chose not to. So I think this is the first true masters of like the not, the live guys. They're they're planted in there. They're they're in the field. They're going to be competing. Uh, you got, you know, you know, our thoughts on Brooks Kepka from the full swing documentary. He didn't even know who won the masters last year, which was such a lie. It, he yeah. knew. Mm -hmm. it was he the knew. biggest bonehead answer I've ever heard in television history there are so many times or so many memes i saw after he lost the masters to rom it's like god i you know i can't even remember who won <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> i, I know yeah, like, no, it was 10 like minutes full, ago full yeah. swing season two yeah who won the masters last year i i can't even remember who won yeah. last year <laughs> no the, overall it was a really good masters i think the live guys actually did show up pretty three of them in the top five mm -hmm. how much did you watch all of it pretty much you did like i missed a little bit on sunday during easter dinner um, Saturday, I missed the, actually, I didn't miss anything because they canceled the second half of Saturday, yep. mm -hmm. but I, I watched all of it until they postponed. And then Sunday morning, I watched a bunch. And then Sunday, I missed the drive time and Easter dinner. And then I watched it right after Easter dinner until sure. the end. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what do you think about the TV coverage? They're the announcers are so annoying. The only person that I think deserves a paycheck out of those commentators is Nance. And I think Nance, Nance, is only, Nance is only Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were driving me insane. It was... It was also, it was, huge news. Huge news. Uh, Grandma saw it first, but then she pointed it out to me. Real live birds. No shit. Real what? live birds in the trees at Augusta. I don't. I shouldn't say live birds, but we saw birds that <laughs> looked pretty live. They potentially could have been droned. Did they move? Got some decoys. Yes. You saw them move. Birds walking down branches in trees mm. at Augusta. I don't know, guys. Maybe the bird thing is fake. Well, maybe it was all that rainy. They couldn't stop the birds from coming in. True. Well, that's another mm. thing too, though, that made me think that the bird noise is fake. I could still hear the bird noise in the middle of the downpour. They're not usually chirping during a downpour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't know the I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, but I know our birds, our our North Dakota <laughs> native birds, are usually pretty quiet during the rain. Sure. But right after, mm -hmm. they won't shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, their cover's blown. Yeah. So I don't know. That's the problem. Is I hear bird noise during rain, which shouldn't happen. But then I also see birds that were, if they were fake birds, the most realistic robot birds I've ever seen in my life. Well, I think, okay, the only way to get that audio is to have mics up in the trees. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. correct to my my audio guys? Yeah. Which I, I mean, think, well. Not really. No. Because, I mean, when, when they're getting the, sh like, when they're getting the club to ball contact noise, like, they have a boom mic right mm -hmm. next to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have other mics that just pick up ambient stuff. Yeah, don't so they, they have atmospheric mics that they're just like set up and it gets the crowd noise and they can tone it down and they can bring it up. And okay. Mm -hmm. They just crank up the bird one all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that one's up. Well, that's just Nance on his phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got his 10 hour bird noise loop. He just brings it up. Um, okay. My question in terms of the TV coverage wasn't more so about the, like, the commentators, but um, I believe it was Saturday when... Rom and Kepka went out together for the first time because uh, the cut had been cut had been solidified. Those two were paired up. And then for some odd reason, they decided to show Jordan Spieth's group and Tiger Woods's group. Tiger Woods, who was like seven over through three holes mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, who doesn't want to watch Rom and Kepka battle it out to begin like to begin after the cut I, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the selection of who's going to be their featured group well i was reading into it a little bit and it's some it was something about cbs's coverage not starting until 3 p.m and because the weather delay came in to effect and that 3 p.m could be, I, I could be wrong this is this is off the dome um because that weather delay came into effect they had to push the latter half of you know round two over into day three mm -hmm. and then that started in the morning so 
that was part of it was like CBS didn't rearrange their television schedule to then accommodate early early play for the Masters. Hmm. And that was part mm-hmm. of it. But um, I, I mean, I was scrolling on Twitter and people were up in arms about the TV <laughs> coverage. Mm-hmm. Now, what I will say is, have you guys downloaded the Masters app? No, I have. Yeah. OK, so I did, too. I'm like, OK, well, I need some fucking way to get by this. The Masters app is elite. But yeah, I mean, it should be. It's like the, the most prestigious tournament in the world. Mm-hmm. But I, this is the first time I've ever hearing about the Masters app. I, I've never heard of it in years past. They could have had it. But you can select all of your favorite golfers. And every time they take a shot, it'll like it'll pull it in, pull their, that video into a queue and it'll just go shot to shot to shot, showing it That's to you sick. live. Mm-hmm. It's fucking sweet. And what time did I do it? What day and time? I did it Sunday at about 3.30 p.m. So I had no time to use the app yeah. <laughs> before I discovered it. I heard about it on Saturday because my uh, brother-in-law told me about it. And that's when they had the delay. And I was like, awesome. Cool. Yeah, uh, that's so. great. I, I, so you I, got two next and a half hours next year. of use because it ended at six. Well, no, I, by, by the time that I had it downloaded, they were showing Rom and Kepka. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I don't know if you remember this, but like th- whenever we first started this podcast and the Masters first happened, we literally on yeah. that episode talked about how we wanted that. Like we wanted yeah, the well, ability to be able to choose which golfer you wanted. Because we were bitching about Hulu's featured groups being people I don't give a shit about. But I will tip my hat to Hulu for this Masters. Their featured groups were perfect every day. Yeah. Like I don't know how they guessed it, but day one, Hovland was in a featured group. Day two, Rom was in a featured group. And they they just the only person they missed was Phil. Mm-hmm. Phil's comeback mm-hmm. on the last day was the only thing Hulu missed. Otherwise, their featured group had everyone that mattered in it every day. Do you think there? You think there's a, like strategy behind but behind not having Phil in a featured group? I don't. I don't feel mm-hmm. like they want to give him the airtime that. Well, they gave it to Brooks. N- not not. But he was in the lead. Days. Yeah, he was in the lead, so he yeah. had to. Yeah, right. If he wasn't in the lead, they wouldn't have given it, given no. it to him. Yeah, but then Phil's making a comeback. You'd give it to him, if that's the logic. But I'm just yeah. saying they nailed it day one. Day one, they had everyone in the top eight. Well, and in, I, in, because they do three featured groups, and that is nine guys, because mm-hmm. it was it's three people per yep. t- per group, mm-hmm. and they had the top eight in those featured groups. They guessed correctly out of the all of the golfers playing. Yeah, yeah, they even had yeah. Sam Bennett, yeah. in one of the featured groups. Oh fuck that dude. <sighs> we'll we'll get to him in a sec. Um, yeah, the what's cool is like. They do a great. It's kind of like it's kind of like UFC matchmaking. Like I don't know what that is. Well, like or like, like genuinely they, choosing like the fights. They, ha, they have a team that said this guy's gonna fight this guy. Mm-hmm. But they and I'm sure the PJ or like the Masters PGA whoever has it. They have a team that say hey like we're gonna we're gonna pair up Victor Hovland with Tiger Woods and Justin Thomas for instance. Like that's a hell of a group. That's mm-hmm. a group that I can get behind because like one guy you know you got your European, you got your legend, and you got like your 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 stud mm-hmm. right. Um, so they do a they do a great job of picking the feature groups. First two days were phenomenal. Well, Second usually they days, don't. That's the thing is I usually hate the feature group they pick, and then the Masters they nailed it. I, like, I don't give a flying fuck what Pac- Patrick Cantlay, oh my um, god, Hideki Matsuyama, and some other rando are doing because they're all plus two. Yep. Then yeah. that's usually the group, and they're not. They're just not. They're not personalities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys like us we want to watch personalities and jt speed they all got personality mm-hmm. you know speed's gonna be cussing himself out after damn near every <laughs> shot whether it's perfect mm-hmm. or not um so yeah th- there was i really did enjoy that i i only had one tv going and i wish i would have had multiple yeah but um we're not in college anymore we can't pull I that know, off <laughs> i know march madness and the masters like the two mm-hmm. times to have multiple tvs in one spot now yeah. now during the weather delay, and of course, it's going to be fucking bad weather, right? Um, yep. What am I supposed to watch? Sicker than a dog when there's a weather delay. When they finally called the tournament, I'm like, Jesus, now what? Now I got to wait three hours to watch it. sleep. Watch gotta, the, uh, go to bed. Yeah, rest. okay. I, yeah, yeah, that's not a bad move. Um, they're not talking enough about this tree. Mul- was it multiple trees? Three. They, yeah, they, they were all in like a clump together, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They're not talking enough about the severity of these trees going down on the yeah. course. Yeah. Like, I, I I maybe saw four to five videos of it total. Well, yeah, well, because no one can have their phones in there. 
the videos you saw were just from their cameras they have set up around the course. I get that, but do you know how bad it could have been Dude, if there, someone would have died? There's one angle where there's a lady, uh, one tree falls to two feet to her right, and the other tree falls four feet to her left. It split her. It landed on I know, I, I, I saw that. And I she saw got that. A, she's the only person with any sort of injury, and it's just like little scratches from some branches and twigs. But she was two feet away from getting squashed at the Masters. Jesus. And then amen corner is a completely different meaning. Yeah. <laughs> well, a tradition like no other is like, we're going to go honor our mother this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Easter our grandmother. Sunday? Yeah, yeah it, it, it was... That was... I mean, they uh, really played it off like it wasn't that big of a deal, and it was a pretty fucking big deal. What, I mean, what happens? Day. What happens if that, like, if somebody dies, right? What do you do? You've already canceled golf because of the weather. You're, pr- I mean, you're not going to play through some patron just dying on right. the course. Well, like, you're the number one rule of of sporting events is supposed to be priority one is player and patron safety. <laughs> like that yeah. is mm-hmm. any. Any sport, that is the number one rule on any list. And it's usually just like a formality. We put that on there. Yeah. And then they list the real rules. But that is number one every <laughs> I mean, time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. What even during, even when the rain was coming down, I'm like, well, I'd be out there. I'd be out there. No problem. Yeah. Like, I'd stick it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, little, they, little you know bit what light. else they buried? One, one commentator let it slip. It wasn't just a storm. It was a storm that they call a nor'easter which are extremely dangerous storms that come in the south with wind gusts of like 80 miles an hour. And it, they, it wasn't just light rain like the broadcast made it seem. It was a nor'easter storm front. And they couldn't be more calm about, about yeah, talking I'm, about Yeah, I'm going to Google nor'easter for you. Just keep talking. Um, no, what I was going to say on top of that is um, like you never think about it in the moment when they're like, ah, weather delay or big storm coming, it's like, yeah, gee, how bad could it actually yeah. be? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the trees coming down, struck by, like, what are the, the odds of that are so slim. Well, yeah, and a lot of times they'll just, they'll cancel events, not necessarily because, like, people don't want to play through them, but just because, like, spectators won't show up. Like, yeah. that's a reason why a lot of baseball games get canceled, just yeah. because, like, there's going to be 20 people in the stands. Right, exactly. Okay, so they play. were getting the remnants of a nor'easter. Okay. Um, a nor'easter is a coastal storm with winds coming out of the northeast. Makes sense. Uh, they're notorious for bringing huge impacts of heavy rain, snow, strong winds, power outages, and coastal flooding. So since they're a little more inland from the northeast, they were still they were getting the tail end of a nor'easter. Sure. That it's <sighs> it is so wild to me that number one the tree went down, and number two. They were able to clean that up as fast as they did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love. I mean, I like watching golf highlights. I like watching go- whatever from the Masters, all this kind of stuff. I, I, I really enjoyed watching their videos, like going through the merch tents and stuff. Also, making seventy million dollars in merchandise over the weekend. Yeah, that million. was eighty mm-hmm. percent of the comments of the the video we put it about the menu being so cheap. Yeah. They're like, yeah, they can charge a dollar fifty for a sandwich when you have to put up a mortgage to buy a fucking polo. And I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm probably dropping over five hundred dollars at the. I mean, you get yep. you get the opportunity probably one time. We dropped a fat bag at the waste management. I and know. We can just get into that every year. <laughs> <laughs> and the tickets are not cheap to the waste management yeah. either. And it's like flights, uh, uh, lodging, and food, and tickets, and booze, and it's like. Waste management is expensive, and we had no problem. And we're still like, I want a t-shirt, I want a hat, I want (laughs) a ball, I want a club cover. Yeah, because you don't know the next time you're going to be back. Um, I would have loved to see a video of them with, the I'm assuming, chainsaws. But with chainsaws comes a lot of of dust, a lot of of remnants of, you know. I mean, they probably had people out there with Hoovers, like, vacuuming up. Probably. The wood chips. Yeah, probably. Um, I would have loved to see a video of them cleaning those trees up. Well, they didn't want to show the video because there's a conspiracy. Someone got killed and they they covered it up at Augusta. Actually, that, I mean, that's not a that, that is a that would be a terrible thing if someone did. I'm, that's not a real conspiracy. I'm starting that right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clip that, Jake. Yeah, yeah I got you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. When you just look of every uh, look at everything or happening around the like there's more happening around the golf tournament than there is actually in the golf mm-hmm. tournament i mean you got obviously you got tiger in pain which is really tough to see but you got weather delays you got 
commentators throwing jabs at live golfers. You got uh, terrible TV coverage. You got fucking trees that are probably a <laughs> hundred years mm -hmm. old. Rooting, what, what do they call it? De Uprooting. Rooting. Uprooting yep. out of the ground. Insane activity <laughs> outside of the golf tournament. Actually, I will say this to the Masters' credit. Could you imagine if people had their phones inside the tournament? There probably oh would God. have been somebody Jeez. who was not paying attention and was just sucked into TikTok scrolling. Yeah. Well, like, even still, though, people didn't get out of the way. One lady almost got squished. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she didn't see it coming. Would have been way worse with phones there. You think she, yeah. she could, like, sue for, uh, like, like, Emotional Trauma? damages, yeah. probably mm -hmm. not. I'm sure the masters got something built into that. Once you walk through the doors, yeah. your your lottery, you have to like sign it saying you're yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, wild, wild stuff, and then all of that for a pretty boring Sunday, actually. Brooks really? just, mm -hmm. Brooks played like shit the right away, and then it was just I know never yeah. even made it close. But then it was interesting because I kept, you know, everyone's watching one and two. They're watching Kepka Ram, and you know, all right, even. They're one shot. Well, he's one shot back, two shots back, one shot, whatever. No one's paying attention to Phil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Phil starts moving up to score. That's, <laughs> yeah. And they didn't, the commentators didn't say shit about it. They would be like, Phil Mickelson moves to 600. And then they would just yeah. keep talking. <laughs> they, they were like, yeah. didn't want it to be real. So mm -hmm. they would just blow by it. I'm like, tell me about it. What's yeah. happening? Well, then when I, when I see Phil's eight under and then I look right above him at <laughs> Brooks, I'm like, Brooks is, or yeah, he, Brooks is nine under. I'm like, that's only one shot back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems so much more drastic to me that Phil was one shot back of se of second at this time mm -hmm. um, and like three shots back of first. I'm like, this could happen. Well, like this he's not getting comfortable in the clubhouse right now. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing that sucked was just Rom was three strokes at least ahead for the entire back nine. Yep. He was already he yep. was, I think he was four strokes up at 10. And then it, Brooks brought it within three at one point, but it then stayed three or four, the whole back nine. It could have been a really, really cool classic Masters if Brooks played a little bit better in the yeah. back nine, mm -hmm. yeah. like he did the first three days. Um, well, and Phil but, finished with a birdie too, and he finished yeah. early too. So it was like, and like he was done early in the day. Yeah. It didn't really matter. And he he needs someone to choke. But um, I am glad Rom won. I am too. I Same. Rom turned me around on him. I've always not liked him. I think he's just got one of those faces. I don't dislike him as a person it, at it all. He's like a big burly, like I don't know. He just I don't know something about his face. <laughs> you just want to rearrange it. No, know? I don't I don't want to fight him. It's just like No, I know. No, I'm Scotty Scheffler guy. Um what mm. what is still insane to me is that Rom is what 20, 28, 29. 28, we're the same mm -hmm. age. And Scheffler is 26. Mm -hmm. How old are you, Trevor? 23. Jake, how old are you? 24. I mean, he's two and three. He's three years older than you, Trevor. Jake, he's well, two years Sam older Bennett's than you. Well, Sam Bennett's the same age as me. That yeah, Sam Bennett is the amateur that played really well, for those of you that didn't watch or know the name. That story is... Well, like... I was pulling for him so hard. Same. I, wa I wanted it for him so hard, regardless <laughs> of... Okay, so also what I found out was, I'm like, Sam Bennett's going to get a fat bag. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope, he's not because he's an amateur. Oh, shit. He doesn't have professional status. So, any But he's a senior in college. He's going to get an NIL deal. Yeah. No, he's probably not because he's going to be out of college here soon. No one's going to want no one's going to want him to sign with them because he's going to be out of college. He's no, cuz he can still keep money. the intern or like the yeah. sponsorship. Well, okay, he'll, they'll roll it over. Yeah, yeah. so like now he can go start exploring True, sponsorships okay. and he'll be ready saying. to go when he yeah. gets yep. to the PGA. But even, Zalatoris did the same thing. Yes. So yes. Zalatoris got second. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Do, do you guys know the answer to this? Like golf is kind of like, it's kind of like baseball where there's a lot of, there's, there's rookie ball. There's sh uh short a there's, yeah, there's, there's like a four season. different farm systems. There's a lot of steps you got to take to get up to the PGA. So a guy like Sam Bennett, who does what he does in the masters, he doesn't just go straight to the PGA, does he? Oh, he, he probably will, because it's the same exact thing Zalatoris. We talked to Lucas about this in our Masters episode last year, how Zalatoris got into the Masters through an amateur bid like this, gets second at yep. the Masters, and he's just mm -hmm. in the PGA now. Well, top because five, top five, Zalatoris five have a top, I believe it's top five or top ten, have a five-year exemption to the Masters. 
I want to say or, or something all yeah. P- or majors or something like that. They have some, I believe it's five year exemption mm-hmm. to where they're now automatically granted in. Which I don't know if he placed high enough. Yeah, I think he was get, 16th. But mm-hmm. it, it'll get him into some tournaments and sure. then he'll mm-hmm. get into enough to get his PGA card. OK, that makes sense. But Zalatoris wasn't an amateur when he got second, was he? I believe he was. I don't think he was. No, Zalatoris was an amateur. He was? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yep. That's why, like, I am not selling Bennett short in any way. I think he was really fucking cool what he did. But it's just, it felt like everyone forgot Zalatoris did this better two years ago. And they were acting like an amateur's never done this. Like, one just did it. Oh. Yeah, I mean that is true. And also, people Trevor, are he was an amateur. People are used are to sure? Will yeah. Zalatoris on the tour now, too, right? Where it's like I think just the excitement of somebody new well, on then, the tour is yeah, because he got Rookie of the Year right after that. I think part of it too was he was like he he posted the lowest score of an amateur in the first two rounds. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not. I, like no, I, said, I know. I'm I know. Not I know. trying to take anything away from him. But you're trying. You're trying to bring Will Zalatoris. I'm, back yeah, to I'm life. more defending Zalatoris than yeah. anything. Because everyone's like, I've never seen an amateur play like this before. Like, yeah, you did. It was 2020. <laughs> yeah, 2020 was a weird year. It's November Masters. DJ yeah, true. Wanted, it was the COVID there. Masters. Yeah. yeah, it was a weird time. And DJ, I don't know, he he was like eight over. Yeah. Nine over, something like that. Um, God, I was, I was pulling. The first time I ever saw Sam Bennett was like, I think it was like a year ago. I, I just saw a clip of him. Um, maybe it was when he won the, the amateur championship. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of just internally said like, fuck, this guy's good. Mm-hmm. And here he is in the masters. I think the amateur last year, I think his last name was Piot. He's on live now. Mm. And I think, well, cause I there's, think there's, this guy was like 10 over after the first two rounds. Cause there's seven amateur bids that okay. get into the masters, I believe seven or eight, something like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I accidentally, I was at grandma's trying to find the masters on whatever the fuck TV system <laughs> they have. The antenna? No, they got, like, Grandpa got swindled by a door-to-door salesman on some oh. TV package, and it's, it's like, a, it's direct TV, but through a local provider, and this the interface is all sorts of fuck. And I clicked something that said, The Masters. I'm like, oh, <laughs> here it is. And it was a replay of the South American amateur open that was a qualifier for the masters. <laughs> the whole thing was in Spanish. And I was like, where's the regular masters that's <laughs> happening live right yeah. now. You can't like airplay it or, or screen mirror it from your phone either. No, because the TV <laughs> is the same age as me. And they, <laughs> it's still got a direct TV box on it. Yep. Yep. And they got 17 remotes. Jeez. I don't understand why the older generation needs to hang on to remotes. Yeah. The amount of batteries that are are good batteries sitting in those remotes that could be used on other things, like a chirping smoke detector, for instance. Well, the thing is unbelievable. The thing that pissed me off is I go into the thing. I'm like, oh, sweet. It says sports right there. I'll go click that. I click sports. It says live sports and baseball game, baseball game, baseball game, baseball game. Nothing, nothing with golf. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what the hell? And I go to the guide and I start scrolling and like, there's the masters right there. You couldn't put that. In the sports tab? No, I know. It's the mm-hmm. same thing with ESPN Plus. Sometimes they'll do like soccer, 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 hockey, baseball, hockey, soccer, soccer, Masters, yeah. or UFC. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but grab it, grab it. Let me get you an Amazon Fire Stick, please. Yeah, they can have the one in my office. I, I, I literally, <laughs> I will turn that. I have a, we have nice TVs in our office, mm-hmm. and they will be on one time per year for four <laughs> yeah. days. Uh, for two days, actually. The Thursday and Friday that we are here of the Masters weekend. <laughs> I, that's I, it. I did watch the Genesis to see Tiger a oh, little okay, bit. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah oh, I mean, overall, it was. it's always entertaining regardless what happens. I, I low-key, I wanted Brooks to win. And I've said some not so nice things about him in the past. And it's not like I'm I'm backtracking on that. Yeah, I, we just, had I wanted to see what would have happened afterwards mm. if he would have won. That's what I wanted the most. I am. I still don't like Brooks. I was cheering for him because of my bet against you because Ryan gave me three to one odds. The live player would. I bet on a live player to win three to one. Actually, a lot closer bet than I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought mm-hmm. I had it walk in the park. I should have done. We should have done three to one top five and I would have won because oh, yeah. three yeah. of the top five yeah. were live guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I am glad Rom won. Uh, I think it was. Like I said, he he made me a believer, even though even the, despite his face, I like him now. <laughs> well, I think it's the way he trims his beard. 
Could be. It's a little like the sides. He doesn't like let it grow back. He just trims it straight down from his <laughs> earlobes, and it's just like a weird amount of cheek that doesn't yeah. have hair on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What was cool about that win too was um, the other Spaniard who has won the Master. I believe he's won it twice. Seve. It was, yes. Yeah. It was the 40 year anniversary since he won the Masters. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it was his birthday that day, and it was Easter Sunday. Sweet. So Jeez. cool moment between those two. Uh, <clears throat> Rom can check that off the list. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. now does not have to worry. I mean, he's obviously going to go to win the Masters every year, but at least he's got that green jacket. Um, so he's won a U.S. Open, correct? Is this only his second major? I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't know. So, because Brooks was going for the Grand Slam. No, Rory was. No, Rory was. Brooks has won four majors, but but they've, they they it was the, U, the U.S. Open and the European Open twice. Yeah, right? he won mm-hmm. he won the Open, won the Masters, and tied for fourth in the PGA Championship in 2018. Okay, so yeah, it was. I think it was a cool story to end on. It was PGA versus Live. I think people wanted to see something yep. like that. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone expected Phil to work his way up to second. Absolutely not. No, nope. which is nope. also fucking sweet uh, because. In the live tournament that I watched last weekend, the one Brooks won, um, I mean, f- this course in Florida, Phil was like eight over mm. through three rounds. Um, also, he was saving it. He, he was saving it for the big weekend. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, I like, was tell you, you wasted your best swing in your practice. Phil wasn't wasting shit. He's like, I'm getting all the bad ones out yeah, here in Florida, yeah, yep. saving the good ones for Augusta. Um, now, what someone could say is Kepka's up three days, three days. In a row. He's got a 54-hole lead. He's up. <clears throat> LIV, you guys, stands for 54. Mm-hmm. They play mm-hmm. 54 holes in live golf. Now you tack on another 18 to that. Is that where the downfall came from? Yeah, I would I would agree with you that that would be the narrative if Patrick Reed and Phil didn't just absolutely surge the yep. last 18 yeah. holes. Yep, that's true. That's the only counter argument. Otherwise, I'd be right there with you. It's like, well, three and done for those guys. Do you think Brooks Kepka, Kepka could have made it a more competitive or even one had the pace of play been better? Yeah, oh Patrick. My God. Patrick Cantlay. Is he on your shit list now? Yeah. He could not be f- deeper on my shit list. I mean, the amount of marshals out on our our <laughs> public courses would be on his ass. Yeah. <laughs> he probably wouldn't be allowed back at a lot of courses in this area. He'd have a fucking area. gallery of marshals following him mm-hmm. around the local nine holes here because that's how slow he was playing. He could potentially, like, the police may get called on his yeah. pace of play. Yeah. Because Suspicious it's so activity. Bad. Like, no one looks at a golf ball that long. <laughs> yeah. He's up to something. Yeah, what else? Is he, is he running drugs? Is he doing drugs? What's going on here? Because... Like you said, Tyler, no one needs to look at a golf ball that long. Well, and I'm not a pace of play snob because we get but ripped. we respect it. We mm-hmm. do. We get ripped about pace of play on our in our comments all the fucking time. And not once in my life have we ever come close <laughs> to taking as long as one single guy took during the Masters on Sunday. Now, I understand there's a lot of money on hand. Uh, like at hand there is he didn't even put that well though i know yeah. i know and those masters greens are not easy i understand but still, um, i did just fine on the masters greens and the simulator so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh I, and i so i understand where where the kepka frustrations are coming from for pace play he has he has every right to bitch about <laughs> uh, about that pace of play on Sunday. It is really funny, though, that Brooks has absolutely zero capacity to hide his emotions. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Like, but even Rom was getting pissed off. Yeah. You could tell they were both just like sitting there waiting. Uh, okay. Um, are they de- like, can we go? Uh, are you going to drive the green? Yeah, I'm going to try. Then we got to hold off. Okay, let me go first. It's conversations yep. we mm-hmm. would have. Mm-hmm. Tyler, you can tee off because you're going to hit an iron. I'm going to go for the green. Whatever. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Yeah, it was frustrating to watch. I was getting tired of waiting for it. I'm like, dude, there's the only thing they can show right now is you lining up your putt for 15 minutes because you're the only group ahead of the last group that's mm-hmm. waiting for you to play. What they say, it was a four and a half hour round for 18 no, holes. In- almost five hours. Almost five hours. So yeah. that imagine damn near our, our round at Arizona Grand. Yeah, because of one guy. Of March. And you know mm-hmm. how much Arizona Grand Pace play pissed us off. Mm-hmm. Imagine in the Masters when you're trying to, <laughs> when you, all Brooks needed was a little momentum and he mm-hmm. couldn't get it because 
fucking Cantlay was in front of him. Hey, that's, looking at putts for 18 minutes. That's a great PGA teammate, though, from Cantlay. It is. It mm-hmm. is. But, but also, Rom is trying to stay in a group. Yeah, you, too. they yeah. sit down. There's like shooting the shit. There's talking. Yeah. I wish I would know what they're talking about. Like, God, these guys are so fucking slow. I yeah. Know. What do you I, think they are talking about? Like, they're one and two mm-hmm. in the Masters. They're they have to be together, going against each other. There's bad blood. Opposite yep. leagues. A little bit. And like, what what do you think the conversation is? Is it John Rom talking about COD? Because like apparently he loves COD. He watched a yeah. COD tournament the morning of Sunday Masters. I don't know. Uh, a fucking dog thing to say from Rom is if he was walking down the 18th fairway and he looks at Brooks and he said, "You know who won the Masters last year?" <laughs> <laughs> and Brooks what an like, absolute <laughs> dog thing to say. Brooks could have been like. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be such a great intro to full swing season two. Yeah. This I yeah. think this tournament will make it'll make great content for full swing if season the masters two. let mm-hmm. them in. That's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah the masters they control like uh, I know you guys were talking about the Hulu and the featured groups and all that stuff, but literally the masters controls all of the broadcasting rights yep. to the whole mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they they I they leave like two hundred and seventy five million on the table every year because they they refuse to give up their rights to broadcast it out with anybody else yeah mm-hmm. exactly they like control i love everything. and hate that at the same time it yeah. hurts, hurts I, me as a consumer yeah i know not I having as many options but i also but I respect it. staying strong yeah i will also say that they do deliver a pretty great product yeah so yeah. i mean it's like it's fair yeah I think. the app is sweet so now that you know about the app i mean the, this app's going to be sitting in my phone for the next year I'm not going to touch it until yep. next year. You'll have to re-download <laughs> mm-hmm. it from the cloud. Yes. Yeah. It'll just automatically get deleted, like not used in 60 days. Um, so, yeah, it was good Masters overall. A lot of shit happening, but uh, it's over now. Mm-hmm. Now we can. Uh, this is the most professional golf you'll probably ever hear us talk about. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is the last time you'll probably hear us say shit about professional golf until the waste management next year. February. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna uh, maybe we're gonna, we have a Ryder Cup this summer. Uh twenty twenty four. Next year. I believe. Okay. So. Those are the three tournaments you'll hear us talk about. The Masters, <laughs> the Ryder Cup, and waste management. Yeah. I believe it's twenty twenty four. Next one's in Italy. Anyway, um, we're gonna take a step back and start talking more about amateur golf. Mm-hmm. Uh not even amateur golf, just average golf. Uh that's what we're gonna do here in segment number two. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about playing partners, Tyler, Mm -hmm. specific things that a playing partner may do (laughs) to where you need to get out and go find a new one. We'll be right back. Ryan, I've uh, laid the seed in Grandpa Dave's mind. He's already asking me about my PXG merch. So now he's uh, (laughs) that is that is baby steps to getting him some clubs. Really? Yep. So I think we got the old man. uh, The old man is interested and that's not an easy thing to no. do when you, when you, when you got a seventy five years year I old. I don't. He's he's somewhere in the seventy five to eighty range. I forget how old he somewhere is. Somewhere in the seventy, like it's hard to change somebody at that age. Well, and you got to think of this too. The guy is in his late seventies and has owned three sets of clubs his entire life. That's unbelievable. And somehow we're getting him interested in a new set at this stage. And part of me. Despite how much I love my PXGs, I don't want him to get them yeah. because now I, I, I finally have the mm-hmm. edge of my clubs are clearly superior to his and I need to beat him before he gets new ones. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, Tyler. You get new clubs. It, there's a little there's a break in period. Yes. And they'll be broken in before we play this summer. And I got to make no, sure for him, though. So you get True. it. You break yours in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You break the new Gen 6s in. You get uh. him the new uh, the new Wedgwoods. Yeah, so they remember. I can't remember what they call them. P, look up PXG's version of Wedgwoods. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so I could beat him twice. I'll beat him once with his current clubs because now I have better clubs. Yep. And then once he inevitably gets PXG's, I'll beat him right away before he yep. can get used mm-hmm. to them. Yep. But he'll have some sort of excuse. Of course he will. Of course he will. <laughs> I mean, he's never needed an excuse before because he's never lost to me. So. Uh, this is my chance. This summer, if I'm going to ever beat Grandpa, it is this summer. This is my time to do it. Oh, man. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a better looking uh, 70 to 80 year old rocking some PXG merch, 
swinging some PXG clubs than I would Grandpa Dave on the course. The only other exactly. old guy I might give the nod to is Gary Player. Mm-hmm. That and, and yeah. Bob, Par- yeah. Bob Parsons does look pretty damn good. Yeah, course, mm-hmm. that stuff. On. Those three, those three, yeah. though, Bob, Boss Gary, man. and Grandpa Dave are the best <laughs> old man golfers. And once we get some PXGs in Grandpa's hands, maybe he'll be. Um, an honorary tea time starter yeah, or whatever at yeah. the Masters. I mean, he'd put one down the middle, 150. Yep. yep. Taylor, are you looking for the 0211 Zs is what you're looking for. 0211 Zs. Sure. Grandpa yep. Dave's potential new set. Yep. The the seat the, the, the seat has been planted and Grandpa is now the wheels are turning. I love that. I wore a, a, a like a light green PXG polo to Easter because it's very Eastery color. Yep. And he's like, Oh, is that the new club shirt? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Huh? Hell yeah. Like, yeah, you'd probably like the clubs even more. Let me film you getting them so I can have a video done. <laughs> I love that. Guys, the new Gen 6 uh, clubs are available. The irons, the woods, the driver. You got to go check them out. Um, they come in two different two different styles, too. When I say um, styles, colors, Tyler's got the chrome with the black accent. I have the black with the chrome accent. They're both filthy looking they when look I say good. filthy i mean sexy they look very sweet um now we've actually had a chance to release ryan finally got his gen sixes i did um I did. so he's no longer i do have a lot more experience with mine like three days more than him mm-hmm. um so obviously i'm in the driver's seat at the moment but you're you're learning they're buttery you're catching up they're buttery butter knives they are the very course. smooth and when i say that i mean I, i've hit i've hit three different sets of clubs in the last few years and i will say when we want to talk about forgiveness, that's the biggest thing with us. That's the biggest thing with our kind of golfers mm-hmm. in general. It's a huge thing. When you got the, I got the player improvement ones. Yep. What, are I, they got the XPs? Uh, yes, you got the XPs. I got the Ps. Okay. Um, which is a step above those. Um, a li- li- little, little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do I need those, Tyler? Probably not. But it makes me feel a little bit mm-hmm. better about my game it when I'm hitting those. Um, they got the whole line of them, guys, from player improvement. Uh, they didn't come out with the blades in Gen 6, though, which I actually like because now they're trying to get these in the hands of guys like us mm-hmm. so that we can feel them, we can feel the forgiveness, the distance on them, um, and you won't be disappointed. PXG.com, get yourself a nice polo, get yourself a new set of irons, driver, whatever you need for the new season. It's coming upon us. Yes. You need a couple months to break them in. And if but you are a veteran or a first responder or a hero of any sort, look up the discounts because the discounts are incredible. And so grandpa will get in on that for sure because he's a veteran. So go check those out and that'll, it'll help you save a buck too. And we're all about saving you guys money. Shout out grandpa Dave. Yep. Um, would love to get him and Bob Parsons in a room together. Yeah. I think talking it, about the old days. It'd be a lot of story swapping. Yeah. Big time. Yep. So guys, go check them out. PXG.com. The Gen 6s are hot. You need them now. Or if you're old, call 844-PLAY-PXG. <laughs> yeah, call the 800 number. <laughs> get, get, go, 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 go grab your home phone landline and call that number. <laughs> <sighs> you know what my favorite thing in the world to hit with my Gen 6s are, Ryan? Um, well, I like to hit balls that are pin-seeking and pin-dropping. I like hitting balls that remind me of a T-bird. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. We should start calling these the Danny Zuko balls. Anyone get that joke? Thunderbird reference. T-birds. They just, well, they're the T-birds. But, I know it's short for Thunderbirds, but never once do they call them the Thunderbirds in Greece. It's just the T-birds. All right, Tyler. I don't know who that is. It's Greece. Okay, Greece Lightning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Danny Zuko, John Travolta. John Travolta. Yeah. His, his little gang of buddies is called the T-birds. Travolta, Scientologist. <laughs> yeah. He is, him and uh, Tom Cruise. Which means they love science, and the science backs this ball because it is the cheapest and highest performing ball I've played with. When we say cheapest and highest performing, we are not fucking around with you. Like, you literally, the scale of fucking around and finding out is perfect for these balls because they fucked around with the price, and we found out it's pretty fucking good. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, buy three dozen. Get one free. Ooh. Promo code double bogey 20, Ooh. 20% off. Ooh. Let me tell you right now. Price drops to twelve about twelve fifty a dozen of golf balls. And I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna be going through at least four to five dozen this summer, if not more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if that's only gonna cost me 40 to 50 bucks, mm-hmm. The amount of money that I can play with hole to hole with my playing partner is going to be unbelievable. Right. I'm going to be going 
10 bucks a hole instead of five bucks a hole this summer because I have that extra money because I bought the T-Bird. I got the deal. I used promo code double bogey 20. I got them for 1250 per box and it's literally only a little over a dollar per ball. Yeah. Think of your margins now gambling against your friends. It's massive. You win Mm -hmm. just a $5 hole. You won five golf balls, essentially. Mm -hmm. You look at it in that sense that that's a great way to look at it. It's you can't beat it, guys. So go to UnionGreen.com. Use our promo code Double Bogey Twenty. And if you uh, if you got enough balls, if you've searched the woods long enough, uh, pick yourself up a poor caddy. Check if they're back in stock. We haven't done that yet. This no idea. Don't know if they're back in stock. But if they are, you need to get one now because they won't be back in stock for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, Back nine bartender. Yes. Get your bartender on. Get that fireball into the poor caddy and then your into your shots, mouth and suck uh, it down your gullet one thing that i'm planning on doing with the poor caddy more often than actually using it for its intended purposes is just sucking right out of the bottle out of the nipple yeah because yeah. like we both have them yeah i don't need to pour you a shot out of mine no, i no. can just drink out of mine we're gonna we'll be fighting on who gets to pour the next one yeah well i, I honestly like I don't think we need to pour. I'm just gonna be. We're just gonna be drinking out of our separate pour caddies. Just like a like a little like a little kid's sippy cup. Yeah, and we're, then the marshal will really not know that there's booze in there because it looks mm-hmm. like a water bottle or coffee mug. Yeah, we've regressed about 25 years with these pour caddies because we're now back into the sippy cup age. Yes, uh, we're sippy yes. cup and booze <laughs> out of the pour caddy instead of juice out of the actual sippy cup. <laughs> UnionGreen.com, guys. You got to go check them out. Get the T-Bird deal. Pick yourself up a poor caddy. You will not be disappointed. The okay. Union, Union Green Balls are a great segue into my first addition to this segment. So Ryan introduced the segment and I'll take it away. Guys, today's segment, we're talking playing partners. If your playing partner does blank, it's time to find a new one. Mm-hmm. If your playing partner needs a new ball and he only asks for yours... It's time for a new one. I will be gracious enough to give you two, three balls maybe. Mm -hmm. But every time you want to hit a second ball, you're asking for me to get one out of my bag. We got issues, buddy. Those are my balls. Mm -hmm. I either paid just over a dollar a ball for those (laughs) or I found it in the woods myself. I will be nice enough. I'll share a little, but I'm not giving you them all. Get your own balls. You go look in the woods yourself. You go to Union Green yourself. Yeah, I I had that. I had something similar on my list, and m- mine was uh, your playing partner doesn't come prepared with the proper equipment multiple times over. It's time to find a new mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And when I say proper equipment, I'm talking about doesn't have enough balls. Guys, if you're just starting out, there's no shame in bringing a bag full of balls. Right. If you're a beginner golfer, you cannot have too many balls in Correct. your bag. Mm-hmm. There are times when I'll go on a golf trip and I can't even close my, my <laughs> yeah. travel case yeah. because the 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 ball um the ball pocket is on on the top, right? On top when I lay it down in the case. Mm-hmm. I can't even close my travel case because that fucker is so plump full mm-hmm. of balls. I'm like, I'm not running out. There's no shame in bringing enough balls. Even if you got to go buy some recycled balls from the guy down the street on Facebook Marketplace or whatever, you can never have enough. Tees is number two. Tees are a dollar for a dozen at the clubhouse. You can mm-hmm. even do like the dollar and pick them out so then you can get a whole bunch of different sizes too like they got them in a fishbowl half the time yes it's like mm-hmm. here's a buck get a hundred tees you got a country club buddy say hey grab me grab me one <laughs> handful of tees here's a five dollar bill yeah mm-hmm. you already paid for your membership yep. grab me some tees homie also make sure every time you go to a course even if it's not a country club and they give you complimentary tees take them just take them yeah it's like 100%. it's like when they yep. get you the fresh pencil in the cart when you go out there you take the pencil and put it in your bag every time because you never know if you're not going to get one on the next Muni that you play. Well, I, yeah, I have a pen in my bag. Jake, how many pencils do you have in your <laughs> bag? <laughs> I got like six of them. I mean, I I think I maybe have two, but never have I pulled one out of my bag. I saw no. a, um, a hack on TikTok the other day that I thought was actually kind of neat. You know how some people will keep a pencil sharpener in their bag so they can sharpen their golf pencil? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do it to your tees. Like you get a broken tee. Halfway oh, down a long yeah, boy, yep, yep. sharpen it. Now it's your par three tee. That's actually not a That's bad actually idea. genius. Like um, we're all about saving money. I know that tee cost you six cents. 
Well, that's six cents you don't have to spend again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have a groove sharpener in my bag. Mm -hmm. That actually would work great to like, you know, fiddle the end of a pencil or fiddle yeah. the end of a end of a teeth. Wait, what is your groove sharpener a knife or what? No, but it's I mean, it's like it's got a kind of a sharp edge on not mm -hmm. like a cut you edge, but it's got a sharper edge on it. OK, so thanks for that little hack, Tyler. Yeah. So yeah, right equipment. Mm -hmm. Also, right. If you got a groove sharpener, I'm checking those grooves next time we go out to play. Make sure everything's within regulation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> groove sharpeners are are legal, Jake. <laughs> they're are you saying legal, illegal? They're illegal. they're legal. Oh, they are legal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, for yeah. us, they are. Okay, all right. I mean, <laughs> how many? If you're imposing a groove sharpening rule on me, then I'm finding a new playing partner. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's just that's fact. That is, I mean, that is my number one. Is people who like love to like play by the books, like super hard, like USGA rules. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not in for that. I just, none of us are good enough to have to use every single rule and know what you know. How many stroke penalty a drop is and if you dropped according to regulation screw that so i will play by the rules once this summer and then it's up <laughs> to find a palm that is it yeah you will you will mark your ball you will put your mark down mm -hmm. you will rearrange your ball you'll pick your mark back up i mean that that's like to the book that's yeah, the only no, time uh, i will mm -hmm. ever do that typically yeah. i don't even put a marker down sometimes just you just hit two putts <laughs> <laughs> One time I hit two putts. Okay. Not sometimes. One time. I am gonna maybe no, nah, I'm not. Never mind. I was gonna say maybe I'm gonna try and get away with a couple of those cheating rules and find a palm, but I don't want to risk it. Um, I'm not trying to get banned too. Also, we mm -hmm. are we're doing qualifying together. I don't know if you got that email. Oh, we are? Yep. We're in the same tea time? Yep. Sweet. Yep. Um the email I <laughs> They know me, Tyler. They know me by name there. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to put your name down when you register. Well, no, I, I get that. But when they emailed me back, they said, uh, you will also be, you, you are being paired with Tyler for this tea time. So they're listening. I don't know. Because how would they know? I mean, that if they're we're listening, associated mm -hmm. with each other. If they know? were listening, though, I'd probably be banned for a second year. <laughs> <laughs> so I, well, no, they realize like, this is a lot of exposure. Like we gotta mm -hmm. lift the ban I on tried Ryan. I telling them that the first year. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot more listeners now than we did the first we year. We do, <laughs> we do. To all 38 of you that were listening during the first time, thanks for sticking with us. Yeah, <laughs> no, seriously though. <laughs> Uh, Trevor, what do you got? Um, I'd say if he goes mute like during the round, like if he gets like really upset about a round and just won't talk to you about like literally anything. <laughs> Like yeah, okay, I understand. Like, are you being fucking kidding? No, dude. <laughs> when you get pissed, you don't say a word <laughs> for maybe ten seconds. Oh, Ryan. I'm oh. trying to digest my last <laughs> shot. <No. laughs> there have been stretches of five, six holes where not a peep out of t-shirt guy. Okay, right. I okay. have Is video it footage <laughs> of this. Yeah, <laughs> I have video footage of this. Okay, describe to me that this Tyler. If you and I are just going out to play a, a casual round, I will not get mute. There have been times, yes. Right. How many casual rounds have we played together? A million. Not many. Casual rounds? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Like six, seven. Not one time was I mute during those rounds. Uh, if you got pissed, yeah. For 10 <laughs> seconds. Okay, what's the video footage, Jake? What's the situation? <laughs> when we were shooting Hollywood, I believe. Okay, we were is. shooting a video again. Uh, we were shooting Hollywood, <laughs> yeah. I believe. It. The last four uh, holes. The last four holes. Alan almost birdies on one hole, and you just can't fucking stomach it because it's the <laughs> second time golfing ever, and you like doubled that hole, and Alan almost birdied, and you genuinely there's there's no video footage of you talking for the next four holes until the end of the video. It's just well, and you just the, fall silent, and then the outro happens. Well, I, no, the last thing he just say. Is basically just telling Alan to shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time he broke his ass. Hey, just you zip your fucking lips. You, you, this is your third time golfing. You guys, I was out there saying I probably wouldn't be. He probably wouldn't be a playing partner of mine. That's true. Partially why yeah. I was pissed off. Uh, if you wear a black glove, mm -hmm. time to find a new playing partner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Grandpa. Uh, yeah, that was not. I mean, for me, that wasn't a fun casual casual round. That was. A, we were going out to shoot a video. It was competition. And that's partially why I was pissed off. <laughs> Still, Trevor, continue your point. But like, I mean, I understand like you want to play good, but like, yeah, get upset over your shot. You're like, obviously you care about your golf game. Thank you. But like, get over it. Like, we're not here. We're not tour pro. We're just here to have fun. Like, enjoy the day. Uh, John Rom said, 
It wasn't his quote, but at the end of the Masters, he they asked him about the double or the cool the double four putt on the first hole, and then the 18th tee where he didn't make the fairway. He he pulled the Ted Lasso quote out. He's like, "Be a goldfish. Goldfish are the happiest things on the planet." And then the reporter asked him to explain it. So goldfish have a 10 second memory. Mm-hmm. They're the happiest thing on the planet. That's exactly why I said 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, but Ryan, sometimes your memory is full six holes. <laughs> So you just got to have that 10 seconds mm-hmm. and then you're happy again. You forgot yep. about it. I mean, you guys aren't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, like, you're, not, you're not completely wrong. Um, you, you also have to, you have to understand I'm a very competitive person. I have a lot of passion for the game mm-hmm. of golf. <laughs> um, also I got, I got last episode, I got called the, uh, the biggest chop slash hack in the Dakotas. Who said that? So I don't know, some guy commented on the podcast. <laughs> and he, he said he gets at least two to three head shakes out of shit that I say every single podcast. So I responded back. I said, ah, fuck. Well, we're going to try and get that down to one to two head shakes. <laughs> so I'm working on stuff. Um, I don't give swing advice anymore unless warranted. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not, not saying you're not growing, Ryan. I have grown a lot. Mm-hmm. Not current, not like in this current sense, but on the golf course. Mm-hmm. But I'm with you, Trevor. The silence is, mm-hmm. it's tough. It's the worst. It's like, well, now not just your round's ruined, mine is too. Yeah. You, know, like, you can't be excited for your shot. You'll be like, oh, well, he's depressed. Like, I can't get happy because he's going to be like, God, like, fuck he, this guy. Like, if, he's, if your playing partner's so pissed, sometimes I'll feel bad about hitting a good mm-hmm. shot because it just makes that yeah. person more pissed. Now, I think it's okay if it, it's not okay to go mute when it's just you and another person. I think it's, it's easier to go mute if it's you and two other people. Also, if you're walking, you mm. can. It's it's more okay to go mute if yeah. you're walking. Yep. If you're in the cart and someone's stranded with you in your upsetness, Ooh. it's tough. Miles yeah. is a big muter. Oh yeah, he's a big time <laughs> muter. And we don't walk when we play. I don't walk in general, but we don't walk when we play with him. Um, he's a big time mute guy, and I typically am in the cart with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's perfect for you guys. Well, no, it's not because uh, I just feel weird. Um, but there's a point where you have to get him past. Well, if you can get him past the mute, the muteness and then into the delusion of how bad he's playing, then he kind of so he gets like chipper mm-hmm. and happy. And he's like, wow, I'm I fucking suck. Let's have fun. There now. is a period, though. You're like if he's just playing moderately bad, he's very upset. Yeah. But if he's playing really bad, it becomes funny. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. you, you got to get him. To either get his shit back together or make him play super <laughs> yeah. fucking bad, and yep. then it'll bring the mood back up. Yep, yep. We're we're, we're gonna work on that this yeah. summer. Yep, that's a good one. That's a, actually I never thought about that one, Trevor. Uh, what do you got next, Tyler? Um, my next one is it's time to find a new playing partner if they're never reciprocating the beers at the Bev Cart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your first two are identical to my first two on here. We should start a podcast together. Doesn't take his turn for a round at the Bev cart is what I have written down. Yeah. It's like, even if they're not really trying to drink a bunch, if you bought them a beer on the first Bev cart round, you have to get this person back mm-hmm. out of principle. Even if I'm like turning it down, at least offer, right? Yep. Like, and I know it's, it sounds petty, but it is just the unwritten rule of golf. It's buy one other person buys one. It's the unwritten rule of life. I think yep. it's yep. bigger yep. than golf. Which, okay, when you break it down, if you buy a round and then they buy a round, it's almost like you just, like... Buy your own. You buy your own. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. it's I the know. principle. Yeah. It's the principle of, like, you thought of that person mm-hmm. in that sense. You paid money for them, and then they got you back. Yep. Gesture. Yep, correct. It's a mm-hmm. friendly gesture. Right, like, remember when we played with Kat? You bought her a beer. Yep. And then she offered later. You didn't really... I don't think... I think we were almost done. But like Six she offered later. to buy another round for everyone else. Yep. Actually, no, we did take one from her. Yep. She did get one for us. So make sure you reciprocate mm-hmm. the Bev cart. It's uh it it really does go a long way. Yep. Even if it's just like, ah, oh, here's one beer. It, like it, it's just if it's second nature to you, and you think that, ah, oh, this guy, like he like, ah, oh, here's another beer, whatever. Mm-hmm. It does matter. They do see that and like, oh, this guy he bought me two beers in the course. It's I really appreciate that. Goes a long way. That's how you can start a new friendship if you get paired with a random. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is true. Yes. All boundaries are broken by beer. 
and also mm-hmm. a good way to get your buddy to be unmute when he's pissed off. Mm. I tried that at the Pine to Palm. You tried to get Ryan a drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's not apples to apples. I know. Though, yes. But like, as a caddy, the only thing I could think of to help Ryan is like, I'm not going to give him advice. Yeah. I'm not going to help with the reads or anything. Like, I'll buy, I bought, I actually did buy you a drink and he didn't want it. So I drank it. But I went and bought him a screwdriver. I was like, this will help. This will get him out of the funk. And you're like, I don't want that. I'm going to drink this okay. year. That's the right move, Tyler. I'm yeah. going to drink this year because I qualifying round. I think we tee off at like 745 mm-hmm. a.m. So I'm I'm definitely going to have a breakfast breakfast beer or a breakfast. Yeah, 745 a.m. tea time. I plan on cracking my first beer about 630. No shit. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I think it, on the range. You're going to be on the range. Yeah, I'll be drinking. The it's ra- state of mind, right? Like we I did a t- whole thing about this, like at golf lessons. State of mind learning. If you're going to learn how to play golf and you're usually drinking, you should be drunk during your lessons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucas didn't know I was hammered, but I was. Um, <laughs> no, I wasn't. But if I'm going to play golf all summer long drunk, I should play drunk at my tournament. I'm not going to play better in a different state of mind. No, I mean, you're right. Yeah, you're I mean, exactly right. So like jujitsu fighters who fight high. Yeah. State of mind, like if you, like every science teacher told us that in school, like your state of mind while studying should be the state of mind that you're ta- taking the test in. My state of mind while practicing golf this summer is going to be drunk. So my my test, i.e. the tournament I'm playing in, I should also be drunk. And you, I need to won't. get a, a breakfast pizza beforehand. You won't. I will. You know me. <laughs> You kidding me? <laughs> you won't. <laughs> I I lit. I will be drinking during the party. One thing I'm gonna do is destroy that clubhouse bathroom. We know. <laughs> we gotta get there at least Let's an get, hour. Get there at 4:45. <laughs> hey, you guys open yet? The bathroom's good to go. Just knock on the door. <laughs> yeah. The only person Fred. there is the greenskeeper. Yeah, they have one ply TP. Oh. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. Um. Okay. Well, you. T- I mean, you took my first two so my i mean i got an honorable mention um if your playing partner wants to walk versus ride it's 100 percent time to find a new one i disagree with that i also disagree i like walking every Are i like fucking kidding me i don't want to no we've talked about this a hundred times i like walking with my push cart i'm not gonna walk and carry my bag ever oh i walk and carry mine yeah gonna, i'm but, not that much of a hardo but there's no come if it's just if it's you and me like let's just say we're we don't work together. We don't have this podcast together. We're, we're buddies who just want to get together and golf. We see each other maybe twice a month. You're telling me that you don't want to ride in the cart and catch up between shots? My best friend in the world. We walk every time we golf together. I don't understand that. <laughs> and it's just me. We got our push carts and we play in league every once. Um, so, so you see him once a week. That's the thing. You see him too often. No, it's the league that I wasn't on the team of. And I was on your team. I was their alternate. And then I ended up playing like once a month. And then we would walk every time. I like it. We are a ride only podcast. No, we are a not walk with the bag only podcast. I walk. I've I've been saying this since the big like episode two. That my one of my favorite things to do is golf in the morning and walk nine holes by yourself. Yeah, but I like it mm-hmm. with a partner too. I see him at the tee. Sometimes like. I, what if I don't want to talk to him for 18 holes? It's a mm-hmm. nice little break. Talk to him about the tee box. Get a little break during the fairway. Yeah, we meet can, him back at the green. We can yeah. walk down mm-hmm. the cart path together until our balls separate. Then we split up. Meet back up at the green. Yep. Gives me a little time to self-diagnose my own issues and him as well. That way you can go mute for that little bit, and then you won't yep. get mad at him. And if I hate the music they're playing too, it gives mm-hmm. me a break from that. We are a ride-only <laughs> podcast. Nope. You're a ride Trevor, on. Trevor, you don't exercise. Yes, I do. What? <laughs> Look at me. You don't exercise. I don't work out, but I will walk courses. <laughs> that is exercise. That yeah. counts. It's not working out, but it is exercise. Yeah. It's because my friend group wants to walk, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do whatever the group does. Like, I don't care. You need to find a new friend group. <laughs> Probably. No, nah, you're good. Stick with them. How am I alone in this? When did we know. become a walk only podcast? Ryan, from episode two until episode 130 episodes, I've been talking about how much I love walking with my push cart. 
you got that bag boy push cart like 50 some episodes in. And I had a different push cart before it. I currently We are a ride <laughs> no, only no, podcast. No. Jake, you like walking every once in a while, don't you? No. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Let's yeah, fucking too. golf together this summer. Yeah. Okay. I fucking hate walking. Thank you. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I I'm not opposed to walking. It sounds like yeah, it. it. Like, does. Uh, like it does. Like we are a ride only podcast, but I will walk maybe once a month. But I'm telling you, by I, I, my hips are not conditioned for walking 18 holes with a push cart. Or well, that you can condition them by doing it. I yeah, you do it. nine, then you do nine again, and yep. then you get to 18. Most yeah, of the time, I, I know it is how the nine. progression works. Like, <laughs> most of the times, I am walking nine, like because it'll be nine by myself in the morning, and then the league walks are nine holes. But uh, I, rarely, we will do an 18, and we'll walk it with our push carts. And after that 18, you're like, I never want to do this again. I know I do it again. <laughs> Try, Jake, what's your next? What's your next one? Uh, my next one is also the opposite of my first one is the guy who just does not play by any rules whatsoever. I have a buddy specifically who does this, who will take mm. unlimited fucking mulligans and unlimited. <laughs> yeah. like, and that then at the suck. end, he'll yeah. go. Fuck yeah, man. I shot an 85. That's, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Alan on the simulator. Yeah, I shot, shot 87 the other day at uh, Payne's Valley. Um, oh, how many mulligans you take? Uh, first he was one. Yeah. Second, second fairway was two. And by by the whole time he describes 18 holes, it's 18 mulligans mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So, like mentally, whenever this guy talks to me about golf, I immediately just add 15 to 20 yeah. onto his score. And then that's like... And like as a podcast called The Double Bogey Show and a video page called Breakfast Ball, we are letting you know there is a line and you can cross it on mm -hmm. the amount of freebies you can yeah. give yourself. Oh, 100%. Well, dude, or if you're just going to go out there and take a bunch of freebies and just be like, you know, man, I shot like shit today. I don't Own even it. know what my score was. Mm -hmm. I just took a shitload of mulligans. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I took a bunch of drops. No big deal. Don't tell me you shot an 85. Yep. Yeah. Just, just say I, I put 85 on the scorecard, but I took a lot of mulligans. Make sure you preface mm -hmm. it. It's like hitting a hole in one on the simulator. You got to pre preface that it was on the simulator. Yeah. Do you know what the best kind of mulligan to take is? A breakfast ball? It's when everybody in your group goes OB. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everyone mm -hmm. is silent, but looks directly at each other and says, should we just all re-tee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys want to hit another one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is no better mulligan in the sport of golf than when everybody goes OB. You look each other in the eye and say, Let's all just re tee another one and start <laughs> fresh. <Yeah. laughs> well, and like that'll bring a group together. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Like we're talking about buying. A, if you're if you get paired with randos and you buy them a beer, that brings you together. This will bring you together even more. Like it's a stranger, and you and the stranger go out of bounds. Like, want to hit another one, dude? Mm -hmm. Then you guys are all your friends now. Okay. Now, if there's four guys in a group and <laughs> the first three go OB, and that fourth guy pipes one down the middle. <laughs> It is time to find a new fourth. No, yeah. I'm with yep. that guy. I love doing that. If he's not taking one for the team, if he's not keeping things as even, uh, not as, even as possible, uh, no, There's I blow zero it. chance that you, Ryan the T-shirt guy, if you went last and three of us went OB, you would purposely hit it OB. No. He would try to... There's pipe not that a, thing straight down the middle. Yeah, goes, there's not a scenario <laughs> on the planet where you wouldn't try to put it in the middle. You're right. I tried to fuck all you guys over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would swing on his shoes, though, because he goes, okay, if we go B, I get a free mulligan. If I yeah. go straight. That is true. Solid. It is, is a true. sweet situation to be mm -hmm. in because pressure's off. You're yep. not going to do worse than the other nope. three guys. We got to get in a four-man scramble ASAP. Yeah, we got invited to, like, a thousand, so we I can know. pick one. And they're all they're all like two states away. Can we get, can we get can someone send out an invite for a North Dakota yeah. or Eastern Minnesota <laughs> scramble that we can drive to within two to three hours? Yeah, because the, like, the, the chances are way better. I I I appreciate all the invites, same, guys. Same. But if we went to every scramble we were invited to, that's all we'd be doing. If we had the budget and time, uh -huh. I would we would be in the car for a majority of Monday through Friday. And we would be doing scrambles around the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, would love to would love to get one a little bit closer. Yep, yep. It, it's gonna happen though. It it'll happen here eventually. I hope so. 
Trevor, what do you got? I'm all out. I think the one that you did give was pretty good, though. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm out, too. We are a ride only no. podcast. No. <laughs> Guys, thanks for listening to as much pro golf talk as you're going to hear from us. Mm -hmm. If you hate pro golf, sorry you had to endure those three days, three episodes of Masters Talk, but you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. We hope your playing partners like to ride as much as you do. <laughs> we also hope they don't cheat as much as they should. Too much. Too much. Yep. Too little. Guys, thanks for listening to episode 132. One. What did you say? Josh, Josh Hamilton, Hamilton. Legend. Mm -hmm. Rehab. From, from regs to riches. Yep. One. Josh Hamilton. Love you guys. We are a ride only podcast. No, nope. Remember that. Nope. See you guys next week. Love you. Love you. Love you. Hey, pipe that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs>